Hi, I'm making this partly um, for the benefit of one of the guys who has commented at length um, under my original Jordan Peterson video. His name is Joseph McGruber and he is uh, what you might call a proponent of the Quiverful movement. And that is a, a sort of biblically inspired organisation who thinks that um, all women should have as many babies as they possibly can. And uh, the idea that there might be such a thing as ecological carrying capacity or too many people um, for our own good is pretty much alien to them. He's also a young earth creationist, evolution denier, climate change denier, and um, it's interesting to note how often these things go together. And um, I, as far as I know, sort of leans politically right. Um, not that that's necessarily relevant, but it does seem to come up again and again and again. Um, I sort of note that with interest because I think of myself as apolitical. I don't endorse or support political right or left. I think there's a lot of corruption and nonsense going on on all sides of the political spectrum. Um, anyway, one thing he brought up was the Georgia Guidestones. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there is a granite monument in Georgia near a town called Eberton or Elberton. Um, which was put up in the late 70s and early 80s by an anonymous group of people who um, had plenty of money and they inscribed a list of 10 what they call guidelines, which seems to have taken inspiration from the Ten Commandments, you know, written in tablets of stone. Um, but they're more like recommendations than, than commandments. And for the most part, I think they um, are well thought out and um, would genuinely benefit humanity. Uh, for example, they speak about reducing bureaucracy and making courts and governments fairer. Um, but some of them are um, a little bit more controversial. The one that most conspiracy theorists like to bring up, including Mr. McGruber, is uh, maintain the Earth's population at 500 million. And I think a little context is helpful here. As I said, they were put up in um, 1979-1980, and that was during the height of the Cold War, when many people were worried that the arguments between America and Russia would result in a nuclear exchange which could decimate the human population. And obviously if civilization collapsed um, then something like a granite monument with inscriptions in multiple different languages um, would likely still be there and any survivors, however far down the line, may well stumble across these and then um, uh, perceive them as word, words of wisdom, especially if the human population had been reduced to a few million, say, 500 million is a lot, plenty of room to expand. Um, but the conspiracy theorists seem to think that um, those are guidelines for what should be done now, as in cull the human population of 7.6 billion, cull it now and reduce it down to 500 million. Um, and I don't think that was the intent behind those particular guidelines. Um, further on it uh, speaks about leave room for nature and that particular guideline I think um, makes a lot of sense in light of ecological carrying capacity. If you think about the amount of resources that human beings are consuming all the time, whether that be fossil fuels or um, rare earth metals, um, 
turning land, you know, wilderness into agricultural land or uh, urbanization, all of these things do impact on nature. Um, one other thing about the population, there are now, in February 2018, 7.6 billion people on the earth. Um, now Mr. McGruber thinks that the population can and should keep on expanding all the way up to trillions, which, um, you know, some 200 or more times more than what's already here. Uh, I, he doesn't. He seems to think that's perfectly possible. Um, I would say there's no way, not a hope in hell, that a planet this size could support that number of people. Um, even, you know, increasing up to 10 or 12 billion, I think we could struggle to feed ourselves. Um, interestingly, the, you know, we are uh, large mammals, and I've looked into the numbers of other large mammals, um, and the most numerous seem to be cattle. There are 1.4 billion cattle in the world. So that's something like a quarter of the number of uh, people. Um, and sheep, I would have expected there to be more sheep, but apparently there's about a, a billion sheep in the world. And other animals, you know, pigs and horses, it's a lot less than that. So of all the um, other large mammals, um, you know, none the population of none of them come close to humans, so we are impinging on nature. We've already caused massive extinctions um, and are continuing to do so in the oceans and um, in the jungles and, you know, all over the planet. Um, we're definitely not leaving room for nature. One other controversial guideline, I think it's the second one on these guidestones, um, and I forget the exact wording, but it's something along the lines of um, maintain genetic diversity. Um, it's not those words, but it's something similar to that, which I would interpret as, you know, it's not a good idea to mate with your siblings. Um, inbreeding is not a good idea. But the conspiracy theorists invariably interpret it as meaning, um, as, as a pro-eugenics message. Um, you know, along the lines of what the Nazis were trying to do with the so-called Aryan race. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that the... because nobody knows for certain um, exactly what the intent was, you know, among the people who put those guidestones up, but um, I think that's a bit of a stretch. Anyway, um, that's all I want to say about the Georgia Guidestones right now. Um, I will speak to you again soon. Bye.